Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I have a fun card in a box for you. What a cool 3D card. I made one of these like nine years ago. Um, it was a taller one. It was like five and a half inches tall. Still fit into an A2 sized envelope, but I saw one on Pinterest that somebody had made using um, the other dimension, four and a quarter. And then as I Googled a little bit more, I saw that our Stamping Up Artisan design team member, Elizabeth Price, had made one and she had the dimensions on there. So I just went with that and I'm going to show you how to make this cool box card. So you're looking at here and seeing these beautiful houses. And of course, I did not color those in that beautifully, but I could with my Stampin' Blends. But I used the trimming the town paper that comes in the suite with the bundle coming home and the home together dies. And this designer series paper has really cool village scenes and house scenes, but it also has really neat patterned pieces too that you can use um, there. And this one, so many people have been cutting out the actual sentiments here and using them on the card. And look at this great one with the the scarves and the hats and just a coming together of everybody and so I really love this paper and if you don't have this bundle the coming home bundle with the great images of the houses if you have another stamp set that has houses kind of in that same you know drawn uh, like nice clean lines this would be great to use with this but also if you have a sentiment that has something about coming home or home for the holidays this paper is also really cool for that so I'm going to use some of these dies in here and they cut out the houses and the trees but the real cool thing about this one that I love so much are these curvy dies here that they cut out the like a landscape like a snow drift or um, I use them on my peaceful nativity one to create that kind of uh, desert uh, on it and it also has this curvy one that has the trees on it so this is a really cute one and I haven't done this yet but I've seen so many cute cards using these little houses like using them as bird houses um, or just a really cute um, just sweet card so I'm gonna be doing that too um, so the home together dies are what we're gonna be using here and this trimming the town paper and we're just going to take a little quick look at the itty bitty Christmas. Now this has been around for a couple years, but it is really a great stamp set to have. Just when you need that little itty bitty sentiment, and these are all Christmas related. So I used that on this card here because it had little little places where I could put things, but it was great. But you could put a big bold sentiment here, but I like this one from our house to yours since we were doing houses. Okay, so you're looking at this thinking, okay, that box looks pretty daunting. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that this is just a quick little template, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna start out with a four and a quarter by 11 inches, so four and a quarter by 11, a half sheet of our designer series paper. On this one, I used the beautiful Misty Moonlight, the new in color, because I liked how it paired off the, um, paired well, should I say, with the accents of the Misty Moonlight there and in the Snowflake paper that's in that stamp set. Now I wanted to use this paper with the pine trees and the little bear trees. Um, and I decided to pull out some different colors. So for my card base on this one, I'm going to use Old Olive, and then I'm gonna accent it with this designer paper and some early espresso that I find in there instead of the white that really popped out on there. So let's take a look here at, we need to, if you look at this card, it's four and a quarter, so half is gonna be two and an eighth. So what we're gonna do is get out our trimmer and I'm gonna leave my directions there so I don't mess up. I'm gonna put my four and a quarter inch side at the top of my trimmer, and I'm going to pull the left side over to two and an eighth. Two and an eighth, not two and a quarter, but two and an eighth. So I'm going to use my scoring blade, and I'm just going to score right down the middle so that I have two sections that are equal, which are two and an eighth, that equal four and a quarter. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is on this card, you're going to have a section that's two inches, five and, a, and then another section that's from two to five and a quarter, and then to another two inch section, and then this last section here, which these two sections here I could um, are three and a quarter. So you've got a two inch, 
three and a quarter, two inch, three and a quarter, and then your flap to put it together. So when you're looking at this, you could just score two, five and a quarter, seven and a quarter, ten and a half, and you could just end up cutting these top lines here. But I'm going to show you on the trimmer how I can actually use my trimmer to cut and then score, cut and then score. But probably the easiest way to do this is to just score it to score at five and a quarter, score at seven and a quarter, score at ten and a half. But I'll show you how I'm going to do this because I'm going to use my trimmer and I'm going to just take a little piece of old olive here and I'm going to get a little piece um, just so I can see here. Just um, pop this in because I had taken the I don't know why I did this, but I had taken the white off there. But I want to be able to see. There we go. I want to be able to see where that two and an eighth is. So you're just going to take your 11 inch side now, put it at the top of your trimmer, and you're going to go to two inches. Now remember, the top part is going to be cut, but the bottom is scored. So I'm just going to take my cutting blade, the darker blade, and I'm going to go to two and an eighth. And that's actually not helping at all. So at two and an eighth is where that score line was. And then I'm just going to cut up. I'm going to leave it in the same place and use my scoring blade to get my score. Now I'm going to go to five and a quarter over to five and a quarter. I'll do the same thing. I'll put my cutting blade at two and an eighth. I will put it down and cut up and then use my scoring blade. And then we have to go to seven and a quarter and get a bigger table here and a bigger wide angle here. Seven and a quarter. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm going to go down, I'm going to look here at two and an eighth, and that's right at the middle. Score up, and then, I mean cut up, and then score. And then we have to go to ten and a half. Ten and a half. And do that same thing. I'm going to bring my blade down to two and an eighth. Put it down, cut up, and then score there. Okay. Now we're gonna put our trimmer away. I love this guide, it makes it so easy to pop it away. Okay, now I don't think I did that quite correct because this should be bigger here. Oh goodness, did I, what did I do here? Two, five and a quarter. and seven and a quarter. Oh, see, I found my error, and that's not going to be too bad to fix. Yay, I don't have to restart the video or edit it. So it's at 10 and a half, and I actually put it to 10 and a quarter. I had the quarter in my head, but then I could tell, oh, I knew that there was supposed to be a half an inch on the end, so that actually, don't do as I did. Just make sure you score at 10 and a half. I did it at 10 and a quarter. So this is going to be the flap that puts it together. So we're going to cut this top portion off, just like my little template told, tell, tell, told me that this is going to be cut off. And then this is the little flap. And since we didn't cut it, it's okay that it's scored. I'm just going to cut a little section there. Boy, am I glad I caught that. And I was an, it, it was an easy fix because... <laughs> I must have did. I kept doing wrong things here. So what we're going to do is want to put this box together, but I wrote on this template here for myself, don't fold, don't fold, because on this card, you're going to be folding down the front part of it, but the back part, even though it's scored, you want it to have some integrity so that you can write your message and it can stand upright. So I just reminded myself on here, don't fold these till the end and figure out which one you're going to fold down. So what we're gonna do is put some tear and tape on this flap that's gonna put our card together. And I like to use the tear and tape because it's gonna be one of those cards that people keep playing around with. So put your tear and tape right on the score, score side um, because that's the part that's gonna hold it together. And then I just trim off because sometimes I found that if I don't trim off my 
that little bit of adhesive there that might be sticking through. Then I put the card together and it actually does stick. <laughs> so we're going to just um, put, get this, uh, get this tear and tape off here. Okay, get that protective off there. Thankfully my fingers are working again. It healed pretty quickly, which I was really um, glad of. Now these are the one, these score lines are the score lines that are going to make your box. So I find that the easiest way to put this together is just to lay it flat and then bring this one over right to that score line. And there I have my box. And as you can see now, these are the flaps that go out on the sides. So these are my scored little flaps. And then now I can decide which side's gonna be my front. Now I don't wanna see this raw edge of where I put it together, so that'll be my back. So this is gonna be my front. So I know I can fold this part down. And then this'll be the back of my card. Now if you would have folded them all down, it just, it would have been fine, but I like to remember to do that. Okay, so now here is our card. It'll fold flat, it'll fit into an A2 sized envelope, and now we just get to decorate it. So I'll have all the measurements for cutting and uh, making this box, but also the measurements for the designer paper, the way I did it on this card. So like I said, I wanted to use this paper here. So you've got two rectangles. I'm gonna fill this rectangle here and this rectangle here. Now, the reason why you're going to want to check out my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com, you'll find those measurements, but also under the video, there's a description under the video you're watching, and in that description, I'll have the actual measurements too. But they're a little funky because of the size that we end up with with these sections. So these two rectangles, I like the border to have a nice, all old olive border around there. So this is going to be three inches by one and seven eighths. So three inches by one and seven eighths. We're just gonna pull out glue today. And so that makes our designer series paper to have a nice one eighth inch border around. It's going to be two and three quarters by one and five eighths. Boy, I don't think I knew my, even after homeschooling three kids, I don't think I knew my eighths and sixteenths and quarters as well as I do now that I am crafting and showing other people how to do that. So we're gonna put that designer paper and that'll be our back. And we're also going to do that on our front one. And I was using my Tombow glue to put together swaps the other day and I was, amazed at how fast I worked when I was gluing. I guess the, um, the uh, just the way your hands work, um, it was like, it took less time than using a tape runner. <laughs> so there we go, we have our two rectangles. Now I'm gonna, I see this one just a little bit, but because I use glue, it's a little bit crooked. Let's see if I can pull it, if I still got a little bit of wiggle room here. I think I do. Okay, pull that down a little bit. Well, that's one thing you don't have with glue. So let's just hide him in the back, okay? So let's put some glue on the back of there. Yeah, that's the one thing about glue. Tape runner, you can pull it off. So we're just going to, here I'm working a little off camera. We're gonna put that on the back of the card. There we go. I love how the old old olive and the early espresso really pop off the uh, with the designer series paper. And we're gonna put this on the front flap. So another. Okay, then we have our two other flaps here, these two other flaps, and they also have some interesting dimensions as well. And they are this section, wait, I thought I wrote these down. Oh, I did, okay. Um, since this section, it, this isn't actually a square, it's a rectangle because, um, yes, my friend Steph, we had a, I kept, 
messing that up the other day. So this is actually a rectangle. And so the dimensions for this, these two side ones, is your designer paper is one and a half by one and five eighths. And then your early espresso is one and seven eighths by one and three quarters. And that's why you're gonna to wanna to check out the description for the measurements because um, you just want it to look cute from all sides. Okay, so we're putting on these little, and sometimes when you're watching your video, you're, I know I used to try to write down all the dimensions and then I just gave up and said, okay, just go and find them and do that later. Just kind of get the gist of what I'm doing right now and then you can go back. But these little, um, these rectangles here because this actually, they look like squares but they are a rectangle. Okay, let's see if I have that all in here. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this little mechanism that's on the inside of the card. Now you're going to cut a piece of, now I used um, one and three quarters by five and, what is it, five and a half? Or five and a quarter, I can't remember. Um, yeah, it was five and a quarter. So, and that's because of the dimension there. You have to have it three and a quarter here. So then I'm gonna score in an inch on each side. So, so you could actually make this longer, but it was just not to be so, fiddly, I just decided to um, make it a little bit shorter. So one and three quarters by five and a quarter, score in an inch on each side. And then what you do is you make your flaps go in opposite directions so that they can fit down into the box. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use glue, but I'm gonna hold it for a little bit. If you, I, just because when I'm doing the video, but you certainly can use tear and tape because it'll hold it together. But when you're putting it down in there, it can touch the sides and then you've got yourself. But the nice thing about this dimension is you can push this flap towards the back and this flap towards the front and it just totally works, totally works. So we're gonna put it in put this one flap towards the back, hold it, and then this flap is gonna go towards the front. And you want the top, the cardstock to be flush with the top so that you can adhere, you know, so you have this flush here, but you're just going to put, now let's just put, fold this down and hold these pieces together with our glue, we're gonna make sure that we've got it together. Okay, so now you can see that that mechanism's in there. Just hold it together on each side. You can see why if you use tear tape, which would be really nice and adhered, it, you know, if it gets in there and you're working with your fingers, it's a little harder to, to do. Actually, I should try putting that flap in there before I even put the box together next time. That might be something interesting. So you just get this, and like I said, th this is right in the middle, and it's not hard to put in because those two flaps butt up against the back of the card and the front of the box card. And then, like I said, you can just make sure that it's adhered. Okay, so we've got our little box ready. Now we want to, and then we'll fold it because we know it's gonna fold and then, you know, you've got it glued together. There we go. So now on this card, as I showed you, I just cut my images that were on the designer series paper with the dies. So I had some left over here. And this is gonna be the back of my card, so why not just stick it on there? Okay, let's just put a little glue in the edges. Just put that on the back with a nice border around it. 
And just like I did on my other card, I used um, houses. With this house, he was a full-size house, but this one is on the edge of the paper. So I said, that's not gonna get wasted. This will be great still to use on a card. So I just pop that right along the edge of the card. I actually kind of like this a little better than the full house. Thought that was really cool. So we've got that little house on the back and then we're gonna work on the inside. Now, to keep um, this little sturdy because it's designer series paper, I just cut out a thick whisper white and you probably could just use a regular whisper white, but I just used um, a piece to glue that designer series paper too because then it has something to stick to. Then it has like a little more stability. So you just stick it right to the blank die cut you did very easy to glue together now you've got a nice sturdy little house and do that on you I didn't do it for this one because it's not going to be holding up there and then I just put some dimensionals behind this little front part of the house piece in the top I've got so many little um, dimensionals with all the edges Got a whole box of them underneath my desk. Okay, so this is going to go right on the front of the house. And then it just has a little dimension on it. And then when I I go to put it into the into the um into this little thing, I just cut a big two and a half inch square. Two and a half no square circle. Okay. And then I just glued it on the back of the house. I just realized I might have been working a little too far down here. I think I moved my paper. Okay, so now I have this little piece down here that I can use to just pop my house in there. So then I'm just going to put some glue on here, nice and generous there. And then that just pops onto the piece we put in there. And the house just fits in there. And if you wanna pop your house, if it's not totally adhered at the bottom, and then just hold that together with the glue and you're getting your house in there. I love that this is a way to use that designer series paper that has the houses on it. And as you can see on the on the back, you've just, you've just totally put that together there so quickly, just using a circle on the back. Okay, so then I added a couple little trees onto this card. So I did the same thing with these little trees I cut out of the designer series paper. I just put some glue. Don't wanna mess up my surface here. Put some glue. I felt a little braver with my, um, my house, but these trees are a little smaller. So then just put that tree on there, get it nice and sturdy with that whisper white thick paper there. And you have this little tree and get it glued. Do you just ever have days where everything, you just get glue everywhere? that everything you touch, it just glue everywhere. I'm having one of those days. Okay, so I've got my two trees. I'll just get this edge here. Okay, I have my two little trees ready to go in there. And I put those together with some glue dots. I just put a glue dot right at the kind of, I kind of folded my glue dot up a little bit Well, didn't work that time. Probably because you shouldn't use your fingernail. Maybe just use your... So I folded my glue dot up a little bit. So it was about a half size. And then I took and put it on the front of the tree because that's where it's gonna be adhered. And I put the glue dot on the front of the trunk. See that there? And then I just, I put my card as if it was gonna be closed in the envelope because you don't want the tree to go outside, you don't want the tree hanging out the edge of here. So just put the tree right there. 
and you've got your tree. And then this little tree, I also folded over a little piece of, I could have used my, my smaller glue dots on this. That probably would have worked a little better. The case is I just want to have the strength of a glue dot, but I don't want it so big. So I'll put that on the bottom of the other trunk. And then I just put a tiny bit of glue on this tree because I have it touching there. So just a little bit on that tip of that branch there, those little pine. There we go. And then pop that little, and making sure I get the glue dot totally on the card base, because otherwise you're gonna have, it's gonna stick on the inside or so there we've got our two trees. So we've got our two trees. So whenever somebody's looking at the card, they can see the trees with the house. There you go. So all we have to do is finish our sentiment. And I just used Peace and Happiness from the Itty Bitty Christmas. And I used my classic label punch. It was perfect. That's the perfect um, punch to use with all those itty bitties. And I just cut out Peace and Happiness and I stamped that in the misty moonlight. Since the house is or misty moonlight colored. I wanted to introduce that color again in my design. I like to try to, you know, introduce the color, equal colors, like maybe, maybe repeat it twice or three times, depending on how I'm doing that. So we're just gonna put that on the back, up towards the top, just a little bit of designer series paper showing right in the middle. And then I, cut out from our house to yours. I actually did use some old punches that made it quick for me. I used my one and a quarter inch, but you can also use your layering circles and my one and three eighths inch scallop. They are still working hard for me, even though they retired, they didn't give up working. So we're gonna put that on there. Just a nice little sentiment on the front. But like I said, it would be really nice to have a big bold sentiment there too. So I'm gonna put a couple dimensionals on the back of this. I don't know why I would put three on there, <laughs> but I just did. Certainly doesn't need three. <laughs> I think because they were sticking to my fingers. Okay, and then we're gonna close up the card and put the little sentiment right there in the middle. There we go. And I use the Misty Moonlight again. So there you go. And then all you have to do, I have a glue dot on my finger and I was wondering why my, I couldn't get my finger apart. It was as bad as having the Band-Aid last video. And so we just put that little house on the back. You can write your message there. So when somebody opens up their card that was in their A2 sized envelope, fit in there perfectly, they get this fun interactive card. Now you can also make different, uh, more layers in here. Like you could make your insert, um, your insert, you can make those pieces so that you can put two or three inserts in there depending. I personally for this card just like that one because the house is so big. So I just put that one there. So remember to go over to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. You'll find additional photos of both of these cards and the measurements that I used, all the products I used, the coming home bundle, the home together dies. And so this is a real fun 3D card in a box. Um, thanks for buzzing by friends.